Hello there everybody, Sam Strains here and welcome back to the Railway and today's video is one that was a request from a guy called Will Prince and uh, this was quite a while ago he asked me for this but he wanted to see a day with bullied pacifics so the Battle of Britain, the West Country and the Merchant Navy class and uh, that is exactly what I'm going to do. Now I'm not sure but I think that I might be able to make this video have the record for the most bullied pacifics ever shown in one go before uh, but I'm not too sure, you know, I'm not out to break records or anything like that but it's possible, I'm, I've never seen any with uh, more than this so hopefully that should be good fun and I've got lots and lots and lots of bullied pacifics to show and run today so hopefully that should be great fun but despite all that I'm going to be starting with something that's not a bullet Pacific, as you can see here, this is a Q1, uh, which is very strange, but I suppose it was designed by Bullet, and basically she's going to be helping me get some of the rolling stock ready for the first two locomotives. Uh, so over here in the sidings near the uh, new station and the church, there are two trains, or two consists, one of Pullman coaches and another of uh, just some empty wagons, or well, some of them have got stones in them. And uh, the Q1, as you can see just here, good little girl, lovely 060, well, a little bit ugly, but not to worry. And uh, she's going to go and get those uh, coaches ready, and she's going to deliver them to this loco, which is the Merchant Navy class, Bibby Line. And uh, I think these were the first of the Bully Pacifics, the Merchant Navy class. Uh, this one has been rebuilt, mind, but, uh, you know, never mind. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, after she's done that, and after the uh, Bibby Line has her train, the Q1 is going to toddle off onto the other line and uh, pick up those various wagons and whatnot, and she's going to deliver them over here to this siding, next to the animated crane, uh, where another Merchant Navy class waits. This one is the gorgeous Canadian Pacific and uh, she's going to pick those up and uh, she's going to be pulling those so let's get going then let's go and grab the Pullman coaches first then as is the plan so let me just get this uh, Q1 up and running here we go no she needs to go backwards right come on then let's go and pick up those Pullman coaches okay let's slow her down a little bit just so she doesn't crash into them too much and hopefully I'm hoping she'll have coupled Yep, she seems to have. There we go. And I've counted these. I think there's 10 Pullman coaches in total. And as you saw there, that Q1 really did not struggle with them at all. Um, so yeah, a bit of a mix and match really of Pullman coaches. There's the railroad ones, the white Pullman ones, and the Queen of Scots ones. But the Q1's coming around that corner now, so I'm going to have to get ready to stop her. I want the last coach to be, well the first coach, to be just about here somewhere so that that Bibby Line loco can just come out of her siding and pick those up. So, yeah, there we go, that should just about do it. Now the Q1 is going to <laughs> drive off majestically into the distance uh, so that she can go and pick up those uh, other wagons for the uh, Canadian Pacific. So, off she goes now then. There she goes. Perfect. And I'm just going to change these points to get her onto the middle line, as you can see. There we go. She's just about fine there. Okay, and I'll just swap this back, and that's going to cut the engine out, probably. Yep. And I'll just power her up in reverse. There we go. And she's going to head back then and pick up the wagons for the Canadian Pacific, the uh, lovely BR Blue one. Alright, let me slow her down then. There we go. I heard the coupling, but we'll have to wait and see if it's actually worked. Oh, no, it hasn't. Come on, try again. Oh, that was a bit rough there. Yep, but it's got it that time. Okay, cool. Alright, so round to the other side of the layout then. I'll let these go past the camera though, just so that you can see what she's got. Various wagons, as you can see, because um, of course the Merchant Navy class were mixed traffic locomotives. So, uh, yeah, there they go then. There we go. So technically the train is going backwards at the moment, but uh, I want that so that the front end of the train uh, is free for the Merchant Navy class to come and couple to. So we're almost there. I'm just going to stop that lot right there. And now is about the time then for the uh, Q1 to majestically disappear. So there we go. Ooh magically disappearing there so yep that's it then she's gone let's get the two merchant navy locomotives out of their sidings and coupled to their trains and uh, while i'm doing that i'll just give you a little bit of info about the class as i always like to do and uh, then we'll get them running and uh, you know see how they perform so the merchant navy class then the first of that class appeared in 1941 and i think i mentioned already that they were actually oliver bullitt's first class of pacifics 
and unlike any locomotives before them, they initially ran on chain driven valve gear, which did actually carry a fair share of problems, uh, I suppose because it was quite a new technology. Nonetheless, 30 of the Merchant Navy class were produced during the remainder of the 1940s, though during the BR period the streamlining was removed and the locomotives were basically rebuilt with traditional Walshirts valve gear. And uh, that's basically what you can see on these models really, these ones that are coupling up to their trains right now. Interestingly, 11 of the class still exist today, including Canadian Pacific, which is that blue one of course, though Bibby Line sadly was cut up along with the rest of the class, which is a shame. But uh, I think we should just be about there then, so let's get these two up and running. So we'll start with the Bibby Line one then, the one that's in BR Green, and I'm going to do this little section live, so uh, sorry if the camera and editing isn't quite up to scratch. Or in fact the uh, controlling of the locos, I've just tried to send her backwards. Okay, forwards then, if she will. I'm just going to turn the camera around so that we catch her once she comes through the other side. Hopefully, anyway. There we go. In fact, I might as well speed her up, otherwise she might struggle to make it up that hill with so many coaches. Alright, let me pull that camera up a bit then. There she goes, I suppose we might as well start the uh, Canadian Pacific logo as well. With her uh, freight rolling stock. There she goes. Bibby line just slowing down a little bit up the hill. And I'll turn the camera around again just so that we meet her on the other side. So we're not actually going to be using the uh, very inner line for this little section. But uh, yep, let's have a running session and then I'll move on quite quickly because uh, there's lots to get through today. And they really are beautiful locomotives. Uh, Hornby, I don't think, will ever beat these. They might not be the most detailed in the world, but they're just so beautifully designed and just really, really wonderful models. And as you can see, although she has slowed down a little bit with the wheel slip, these coaches haven't beaten her. And what did I say there was? Four, five, six, seven. Yeah, there, there is ten. So that is insane, because this is actually quite a steep hill. Yep, I like big rakes of wagons as well, I think they always look very smart. Gorgeous Canadian Pacific of course, really really fantastic model. And I'm going to try and get uh, Bibby Line's wheel slip as she comes up here. As she comes up here and gets to this station I'm going to try and capture her wheel slip. So, uh, Because I know some of you like seeing a bit of wheel slip, so yep, I'm going to get ready for that. She's coming now. Ooh, look at that. Such a struggle. Oh, but look at that. She's such a good girl. She just manages it. <laughs> I don't like doing that. I don't do that for long because I don't think it'll do any harm to them, but I don't want to put them under any unnecessary stress, of course. A little bit close to the camera there, <laughs> sorry. Not the best shot I've ever done. Well, I'd love to keep these running all day, really, because they're that good. But I think it's time to move on, so I'm going to take all this off the track, off camera, and uh, I'm going to put these two into a siding, and we'll build up those sidings with all the engines I'm showing today. Uh, so, yeah, let's have a little break then, and I'll see you in just a moment. So I've cleared all their rolling stock away and I've just put those single locos together in a siding and uh, I'm just going to build the locos up in that siding and probably in a couple of others uh, once I get through the video. So yeah, they'll wait there and you should see them as uh, we go. But let's introduce the next uh, four locos here. I'm going to be running four in the next session. So here we go. And now you're seeing an empty track, very mysterious. And I'm now going to move on to the Light Pacifics, which is the Battle of Britain class and the West Country class. But I believe, I think I'm right in saying that all of the ones in the next uh, little section of the video are all going to be considered Battle of Britain locomotives. So I'm not going to keep you staring at this empty track for long. So here we go. Here is the first couple. And it is a couple because they're double heading. 
So here they come into shop right now, and these are actually the same locomotives. Uh, these are both Winston Churchill, but you'll notice they've got different running numbers. The one at the front there is in the BR green, and that's got the running number 34051, and of course that's a BR running number. Although the one at the back, which is also Winston Churchill by name, has the southern running number in the southern livery, which is 2 I see, I would say. It might be 2-1-C, I'm not too sure. I'm 151. So yes, two Winston Churchill locomotives with seven Southern coaches on the back. And of course, between them, that is no challenge for those at all. So that's perfect. Uh, we'll move on to the middle line then. Here's what's on the middle line. There we go, another Battle of Britain locomotive. This one is Spitfire, and it's the running number 2IC166. And this is a gorgeous Hornby one. It's from the like reboot in the 1970s, maybe even the 80s. And it's got the slightly different gearing, but you know, none of that's important. It's an absolutely fantastic locomotive, absolutely gorgeous. And she's got some of the Smith's Crisp Snacks and Nuts bands on the back of her. So that's perfect. She'll be running in just a second. But lastly then, on the very inner line, we've got another locomotive. Here we go. Another trying one. Oops, <laughs> abrupt stop. And uh, this one is Fighter Command, with my own nameplate, which I made, so they're not all that good, they're a little bit wonky, but never mind. That one's running number 2IC, or 21C, whatever it might be, 164 this time. And she's got quite a nice consist of various tankers there, so uh, hopefully that will look quite nice. I think I'm definitely going to get through quite a lot of rolling stock today with this video. Uh, but yeah, for now, let's get everything up and running and uh, have a running session with these. And of course, just in case you didn't know already, I'll give you a little bit of info about the Battle of Britain class, or the Light Pacifics generally. So here we go then, here's Winston's, the two Winston's. Off they go. Then the Spitfire, which is a little bit slower because it's got the different gearing. So there's that, perfect. And finally then, Fighter Command with her various different tankers. There she goes. Okay, so I've just done a little bit of research on the running numbers and it turns out those first I's that I said were I's were actually 1's. So the running numbers are actually 2, 1, C, 1, 164, etc. Not 2, I, C, 1, 6, 4, etc. So, yeah, just thought I'd better point that out. But, yeah, the Battle of Britain and the West Country Clash, which we'll see later, were collectively known as Light Pacifics and these were designed a few years after the Merchant Navy class in 1945 by Oliver Bullard, of course, as a similar but smaller version of the Merchant Navy's. The first 48 then were known as the West Country class, and I'll get onto those later again, and the final 17 were known as the Battle of Britain, which are these, although actually the locomotives were technically absolutely identical. They were a very unique looking class, characterised by their air smooth casing, as you can see on these, and wheels with little holes in them rather than spokes in order to reduce their weight. And they were very efficient machines, designed to be as efficient as possible by Oliver Bullitt there, of course. In total, 60 were rebuilt, and we're going to visit the rebuilt West Country class later on. 10 have been preserved, and 40 were scrapped. Okay then, I think it's time I popped all these locos into that siding then, ready to move on. I've got a few more locos to show you which fit under Bullet Pacifics, and one of them is an extremely, extremely special one. And I'm not sure it's ever been shown on YouTube before, uh, at least not properly anyway. So yeah, let's give that a go, and uh, be right back as always. Okay, we're doing pretty well then, that's six of the Bullet Pacifics looked at so far. Plenty more to come, of course, as I said, but uh, there they all are together. Um, five of them in one siding, as you can see right there, and the sixth has had to spill over onto uh, another siding over there, as you can see. So, yeah, all good fun. Let's move on. 
Okay, so you're looking at the empty tracks again, as you can see, and I'm going to introduce then the next couple of locomotives. So here's the next one, and we're moving on to Wren now, by the way. I don't think I said that. So, yeah, seen these not too long ago, uh, if you've been watching some of my reviews. Here we go. That one is my rebuilt West Country class. This one is Barnstable, as you can see there, running number 34005 in the BR Green livery, as you can see there. Wonderful locomotive, a really, really fantastic machine. And uh, it really is mightily powerful as well, as you probably know, but she has got a reasonably small rake, well, it's small for her, of uh, various wagons and my ocean wagons and uh, various others. Uh, so hopefully that will all look very nice. And I'll get her running in just a second, but then on the second line, we have this one. Here it comes right now. There we go. And that one is in the Southern livery, which is of course fictional because these were rebuilt during the BR period in real life. So this one is 21C109 and that's Lime Regis in that gorgeous, it's a very odd southern green, it isn't the sort of normal southern green, but yeah, not to worry, never mind. And she has got a, well, a reasonable rake of low loaders, it's something I don't do very often, so I thought I'd do that, so yeah, a few triangle ones there, a few uh, logs, bits of track, all that sort of stuff, so hopefully those two will look pretty good together. And uh, yeah, without further ado then, let me get these two running, and then we'll get on to the grand finale, which is pretty grand, <laughs> definitely. So here we go then, let's have that running session. Now these are really my favourites, I mean they're just, I don't know, they're just the closest you can get I think in double O form to the real massive powerful machines that these things were in real life and I think that's what I love about them just get a real sense of power from them. There's Barnstable and there's Lime Regis. Nice and quick, <laughs> probably a bit too quick for freight. There we go, and I have also slowed Lime Regis down a little bit because I think she was flying a little bit too quickly there. And uh, yeah, these low loaders aren't very heavy at all, so it really is like she's got nothing on her at all. Yep, beauties. I absolutely love Bullet Pacifics. Just can't beat them in my opinion. Uh, they've got to be my favourites, definitely. But anyway, it's time to get these off, I think. I did show them both not very long ago, so I'm not going to keep them running for that long because I really want to get on to the grand finale. And uh, I'm really excited to show you that one. So I'm going to get these off, off camera of course, put them in that siding over there. Uh, that one over there. And uh, then we'll move on to the final loco of the day. And uh, I've saved by far the best till last, I think. All right, be right back then. Okay, that's all done then. Here we go with eight Pacifics on the line. Uh, well, in these sidings. Bullet Pacifics, of course, of all different shapes and sizes now. And uh, I won't keep you waiting any longer then. As promised then, here is my super rare, fantastic Bullet Pacific. And a little bit more about it coming up now. And here it is then, my Wren Mint Condition Unrebuilt West Country Class. This one is Plymouth and it's number 21C103 and it is by far my most prized and favourite locomotive that I own. Um, it just is absolutely wonderful. 
Uh, they're incredibly, incredibly rare, and in fact I think this is probably, although I'm not sure, uh, I think this is probably the first time one is going to be seen running on YouTube. They are that rare. And, uh, you know, even in poor condition, they fetch an awful lot of money, but this one is absolutely mint, as you can see. And uh, I will review it at one stage, so uh, if you'd like that, uh, then uh, stick around. But the Southern coaches have come back out for her for this uh, quite special occasion, because uh, this is the first time she's ever going to run on the channel. So here we go then. This is Plymouth, my uh, mint condition Wren. I'm sorry to keep banging on about it. I'm showing off a little bit, so sorry about that. Uh, but yeah, here we go then. Here she runs. Uh, for the first time on the channel, here we go. And let's have a run then, shall we? Here we go. Just look at that. Amazing. She's so powerful and she runs so well and quietly. It's just incredible. So there you have it, definitely a first on my channel anyway, something like this, so I can't normally afford things like that, but uh, yeah, that was a treat, and uh, I spent a very long time finding one. Well that's it then, that's all of my Bullet Pacifics, now all I've got to do is get this one into those sidings as well, and uh, I'll show them all together. So yep, yeah, let's do that then. Well, there they all are then. Quite enjoyed that actually, that was a really fun one to do. And uh, hopefully it's been quite an interesting and probably quite a unique video as well. So I do hope you've enjoyed it. And if you did, please feel free to leave the video a like or even a comment because I do love to hear from you as you probably know. And I will always get back to you in the comments. Uh, also, you can check out the Facebook and Twitter pages at facebook.com forward slash samstrains or twitter.com forward slash samstrains. And don't forget, if you want your pictures up on the walls in this room, uh, you can send them, uh, or drawings or whatever, up to uh, samstrains at outlook.com and uh, I will print them out for you and put them up. So I think that's about it. That's all I've got to say. So again, thank you very much for watching. Much appreciated as always, and I'll see you all very soon. Cheers, everybody.